four. Okay, great. All right, so I'd love to just open us up in a brief word of prayer. Mm. Lord, thank you for gathering all of us here safely this evening and um, thank you for giving us the opportunity to be able to record uh, the session for people who can't be here as well. Uh, we are so grateful to Ross and Danielle for uh, speaking to us about what it means to be a representative payee and how we can um, support people who are in need through this really urgent, um, urgent need from Crawford Homes. So mm -hmm. thank you for uh, thank you for enlightening us this evening, and we uh, help us to go forth to serve you and to uh, love our neighbor as our neighbor love our neighbor is to love you amen mm. um. thank you. so uh since we are um opening up with uh just a few conversations to ross i uh also had a question for him which was and you might have you might have more of a structure that you want to tell us overall, Ross, but uh, we might also just kind of ping pong you with questions. Did, sure. you, uh, did you know the person that you were going to be a representative payee for? Um, did you have some kind of connection with that person before you decided to, to join that program? I did not know. So the way uh, I became a representative payee for someone at Crawford Homes was <laughs> I so I live in a community called the Catholic Worker. We work with people who are otherwise be homeless. And uh, some folks I knew from that were applying for disability. And there was a sense of um, uh, this person maybe needs a payee. They trust you. Would you do it? And I was like, yes, for this person I know, I would be willing to do it. That fell through. It didn't happen. But Danielle remembered that I said that I would. So then when uh, then they're like, now there's this total stranger who needs to pay you. Would you do it for this total stranger? And I was like, well, OK, I guess I said that I would do it anyway. So um, so that's so no. So Ethan and I had um, no contact prior to me being a representative payee. Mm -hmm. um, and we have we have uh, relatively little uh, contact to her uh, five or six times a year, maybe something like that. So. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm happy to, uh, I, format you were imagining, I can just like start talking about, I can just like launch in if you want me to, um, but I was sure Danielle could, could do it. Okay. So everyone here is like interested in the possibility of becoming a representative payee for specifically for someone at Crawford. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Very what good. Is, I'm showing my ignorance here. What is a representative? Payee? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Billy um, know exactly what that is. A representative payee is a category created uh, by, by the Social Security uh, Administration, um, which is uh, there's someone who is entitled to benefits, uh, usually disability benefits, but is not able to adequate, is not able to responsibly manage their own money. Then the representative payee is the steward of their finances. So um, even more uh -oh. did he freeze for others as well yes oh dear very dramatically as a matter of fact <laughs> okay we'll give him a moment I'm sure he'll come back to us <laughs> I was a payee many years ago. Um, it came about, and it did, wasn't with someone with Crawford Apartments. Um, somebody from Trinity. Yep. There it is. <laughs> there you go. Okay, there you back. Sorry about this. You all froze up. Are you still there? <laughs> so did you. So, so did you. Okay. <laughs> I bet. I believe it. Good. Well, hopefully, hopefully, I won't freeze up again. Okay. So, what was the last thing I said? What was I heard? Mm. What is a representative payee? So it's it's if someone can't um, manage their their money but is entitled to it. It's you're the person who is the steward of their funds. So Eden is on disability. He has a very long history of drug addiction um, and other um, bad decision making. Um, and so she she was on disability. She was getting money, um, but it was very clear that it she you. Uh, uh, to secure food or housing, 
it was being used in ways that were considered legally uh, inappropriate. So she stood to lose her benefits. So there was a sense of like, the government is not going to keep giving you money to buy drugs, basically. So it's like, you can keep getting money from the government, but someone, there has to be someone else who receives the money and uses it on your behalf. So like, you're the, you're the, you're the, you're the adopted parent, you're the foster dad of their money, basically. Um, so that's what, that's what the category of a representative payee is. So Eden gets, uh, I think right now, $781 a month. Um, that money uh, goes, is direct deposited into a bank account, which is the name on the bank account is Ross Martini Eiler, representative payee of Eden Gordon Bratz, a very long line on the check. Um, but so it goes to me. So I am the legal recipient of that money, but I have a legal responsibility to spend that money um, for Eden uh, um, for food and housing and to secure her kind of basic needs. Um, so that's what the, the position entails. It is, uh, you know, it just can throw out like real simple. First of all, it's, it is, you know, I don't know. Because I'm doing, it, I can say this with like uh, history with people experiencing homelessness. It is a super um, necessary thing. People um, are not necessarily home uh, um, because they don't have, you know. Uh, people often think that people are homeless because they don't have money, and that's often true. Um, but there are lots of people who do, in fact, have money who are homeless, and there are lots of people who have no money who are not homeless. Uh, the reason. Ultimately, you become homeless is because you don't have social capital. So it's when there's no one left who's willing to like help you out, when there's no one left who's willing to put you up on their couch or what have you. That's when that's when people's lives really tend to fall apart. Um, and helping people manage their money is a big piece of that. I'll never forget kind of early in the the days of the Catholic Worker, um, we had we had someone who was homeless who was living with us, and she had been working. She had a good job. She was working this job really well for like a while, for like four or five months. So we gave her a move out date because she's been working and earning all this money. Um, and then she got like an apartment. Anyways, and finally her move out date came and we realized like she had no money. She had like, she had no, she didn't have the the kind of higher level reasonings to like set money aside and not spend the money when you've got it. Um, that that's actually a pretty unique skill set to be able to do that. Uh, that kind of comes with being upper class, middle class. Um, and so a lot of folks who, especially who are generationally poor, who've grown up in generational poverty, that's just a skill, you know, it's like ask you to, you know, change the oil on my car. Like a lot of people are like, change the oil on your car. It's easy. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that. Um, and that's managing money for, uh, for a lot of people. And especially when you add in like addiction and other challenges, the folks who are chronically homeless at Crawford, it's not really kind of realistic to expect them to be responsible money managers, which is why, um, being able to offer this service is can be really valuable and, and really um, helpful. The sort of the downside of it, I mean, um, so that's a, that's an upside of it. I would say uh, the downside of it, though, depending on your personality type, this could be considered an upside. Is that it is um, exceptionally impersonal. So you are not um, building. We kind of chip with people you're not um providing uh uh love and vulnerability and listening to their story and seeing yourself none of that none of that ooey gooey stuff which is like actually really i think important and, and helps people and is uh is is good for those who receive it and good for those who can offer it it's a very impersonal um it's it's a lot of online shopping and a lot of like bank uh, you know, online banking. Um, so, on, so the downside, like you're really wanting, like, I want to like, I'm going to have this payee and this person and I like will be, I can like help this person and we can like have a relationship. Don't do it. Cause this is a bad way to like have a relationship with someone. Um, but if you're like, I would like to help someone, but like, I just want to do it. Like, I just kind of wanted to do it from my computer at home. Um, then there's actually like a, a, a very, good service that you can do from the comfort of your own smartphone. You can pour yourself a glass of wine, you know, get some nice cheese and, and help this person out 
you know, once an, one hour a week or whatever. Um, I would say, I would say like time, I, actually, it's probably a good question. Time, it's, if you average it out, it's probably, it's not bad. It's like half an hour a week, say, is how much time I spend doing eating stuff. Now, that's like the, that's front loaded. So the first couple months, way more than that, um, just a lot to figure out and a lot to like get going. Um, also, especially with Eden, because she had, this may not be true for everyone, but she had back pay. So yeah. um, there's a huge amount of money that came in that we had to spend all at once. And now we're in like, now I'm in just like in the groove and it's just sort of like in the pocket. And I'm, there's a, a system that is set up and that's, that's all there is. Um, so I'm happy to tell you about the system that I have developed and like how I am a payee, but are there questions about the things I've said up to this point? Well, one thing that Danielle told me when we met with her mm -hmm. was, and I really like this, is they have social workers and caseworkers or somebody there that talks to the people how they're going to spend their money. So you're not in the position of arguing with them that they do not need a student. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that right? Do I have that yes. Right? And, and indeed. So uh, good, good point. And it is good if this is all through Crawford. So uh -huh. um I, I, I think I said, I talk to Eden. I see Eden and talk to her when I'm dropping off some money, maybe like five, you know, two or three months, not often. I talk mm -hmm. to Eden's, I text or email Eden's caseworker yeah. three times a week. So that's like the primary liaison um, with the payee, which is really useful. If you didn't have that caseworker, I, yeah, I was like, totally I'm not payable. doing it if I have to argue with somebody about that stuff. Yeah. You know? And, <laughs> and oh. indeed, um, uh, you should just kind of know, and this is also like, um, uh, <laughs> this might appeal to some personality types, but you are, you are like, definition, you're going to be the bad cop. Like, you're going to be the baddie that the person is like uh, upset with and annoyed with. Um, it's their money. Why are you not doing what their money, what they, why don't you, you just give them all their money? Um, and indeed, by the way, I know uh, I've met several, anyways, who have been mandated having payees by the government. Like you have to have a payee and they just get a friend to do it and they give their friend a cut just to cash it and give yeah. them all the cash so they can see you know, how they, they used to be or whatever. Um, so that's what a lot of people like, that's what, payee is like why aren't you doing that guy's got a payee and he still gets all the money why don't i blah 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 so like there's just a fundamental way that like you just have to embrace the the case manager and i think this is important you have to let the case manage a good cop and you be the bad cop so when there is a um even want this we can't we don't have the money for it we can't prioritize it we spin it up we're like this isn't a good idea because last time she did it got stolen or she sold it or whatever you you have to kind of be like I've, I've definitely told the caseworker, um, say it's my fault, you know, like say like, if it was up to me, caseworker, I would totally do this for you. But it's that Ross guy who just keeps saying no. Uh, because if you try to reverse that, like you're just asking for trouble. You got to let the person who's actually doing, who's being the go-between, be the good guy. And you, back you're the even if guy. it's the caseworker who's like, this is a bad idea, you know? Um, so you just have to like, know, like that's, that's like, um, that's that's part of it or whatever and i've the you know it's hard so caseworkers it, it's uh it's a high turnover job i think i've had um five or six in the students caseworker in the year and a half that i've been in the position um one of them the one person you're doing now it's good um uh one was just like outstanding lights out one was like real bad where like um maybe stole some of the money actually um uh like kind of got fired it was like bad bad scene so like also totally mostly i mean uh beacon's an amazing organization uh 99 of the employees there are just absolutely wonderful and stellar but like you also like the different case workers played the game really different so that's like another just a dynamic to, to kind of be aware of and to have heads up about um yes any other other art do you sign up for a specific 
period of time or how does that work? Shoot, he's froze again. Yes. That's a really good question, Donna. It, it is. is. Yep. It is. I'm wondering if someone's deemed to need a representative PAE, if they always are going to have to have it, or do they ever get good enough that they can move on with their own? Or The other thing that Danielle told us she was asking us to do this was because Crawford House gets their rent, their portion from the people living there so they can pay the landlord because they get subsidized. And I thought, oh, that makes sense because Daniel can say pay your rent first, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Sorry about that. You all, so you all, I had to leave out. You all froze up again. So, but now hopefully you know that I'll if I <laughs> if I if I freeze up. We so trust was, that you will. <laughs> what was the, what was the question? It was, uh, do you sign up when you if you do this? Do you do it for a specific length of time? Or uh, good question. So, um, I. That would be a question for Danielle, probably, rather than for me. I think, like, I was like, uh, in general, like, no, you're signing up until the person dies. So it's like, it's like a indefinite. Uh, Eden will need a representative payee uh, uh, for as long as she's alive. Um, so uh, I kind of went into it with just sort of this open ended, like, I'll just do this until I quit or you know she dies, uh, basically, or I. Die. Um, so. Uh, I bet you could, um, that said, that's more of a question for Danielle because she may be like, yes, if you're like, I'll do this for two years, please, pretty please, and we'll find someone else at the end of that time. You can, um, uh, so long as you communicate well with the social service administration. Ross, did you have... <laughs> <laughs> well, as I started to say, I was a payee several years ago. Mm -hmm. I inherited this person from a fellow clergy person who retired, left. And so uh, she had asked me to be his payee. And the only thing that I did was once a month, I wrote a check out to him and he used that to pay his rent and for spending money. And it was the same amount every, you know, every month. Um, I did have to go to the social security office with him to fill out and sign some papers. Um, let's see what else. Uh, and it was very simple for that because I just wrote that one check and, you know, e easy to balance the checkbook. <laughs> yeah, one check. So I, I turn up, I turn up my, I turn off my Wi-Fi. I'm on data now. So hopefully whatever's going on with my Wi-Fi, we'll, we'll knock that off. Good. You're all still here? Can you hear me now? You're still yes. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. I think it's a Wi-Fi thing. I think it's a Wi-Fi thing. I'm on data now. So hopefully we'll be, it'll be fine. Ross, uh, so, I, was, it, <laughs> I was just sharing with them that I was a payee many years ago. And it was, <laughs> the one I did was like a one month, one check a month deal. <laughs> it was very yeah, simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what is your accountability? I mean, do you have to report someone, somebody, or I? I yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, your your uh, there's very little reporting that needs to be done. I can I'll show you the reporting that I do that I keep and that needs to be done. In terms of like accountability or responsibility, it's um actually unhelpful, I think it's unhelpfully high um, in the sense of like, plus their hearts. But if the social security administration thinks this is a good idea, they really ought to make it easier on people to do. Um, just in the fact of like, if um, if anything goes wrong, it's like, it's totally on you. Like you don't get to, and, in, and you are indeed like, uh, the basic idea is that you're then responsible for the money. So if I, buy something uh for eden that i think is good for her to have but then the government later says no that was not good for her to have i have to 
I am responsible to pay the government that money back. Um, so especially me, like I'm like, you know, I'm low income. Um, so that sort of sense of like, I li- like I can't, if I spend five thousand dollars in the government's like you shouldn't be spending that five thousand dollars. Now you owe us five thousand dollars. Like I could, that's not good for me. Um, but that said, um, again, there there is like tremendous abuses of the system, and um, I think they. Uh, uh, so the people I've talked to kind of like know, and they're like, oh, you're actually someone who's like trying to help someone like you're like we're not out to get you basically is kind of what they've said um uh also like to that end actually are you we have a local social security every every person on social security disability has a agent or a uh, case manager with the social security that is like based on your like region. So like for our county. Um, and so you can call that person and talk to that person. Brenda Brittle is, is Eden's and she's actually been super helpful. So I call her whenever I have the slightest question. I'm like, Brenda, tell me what I'm supposed to do here. And Brenda is like totally down. So like, this is what you want to do. And she was kind of the one who was like, look, you want to take like, her thing was like, look, you want to take good records. But like, if you're making a good faith effort to like, show that you're doing the best with the money you don't you shouldn't be afraid of like penalty or getting in trouble because that's not we know that there's people who are baddies and that's who if we're gonna cause trouble that's who we're gonna cause trouble for the um uh the record keeping you should do um and so you will get if you sign up you will get these two little books which i believe are available if you're curious you can um just find them online, like PDFs. There is what what you need to know about SSI. This is backwards, um, and a guide for representative payees. That's probably the one you want to look up. A guide for representative payees, which you can get at socialsecurity.gov, um, and it tells you uh, that you should keep records in accordance with um, social sec- at the form. This is the social security form, SSA-623, SSA-623, um, which is, um, so I kind of show you like my balance here. So I had a like, they don't have a sample spreadsheet. I had to make this spreadsheet. I'd be happy to share the Google file or whatever. But this is like what they say is they want to know they, they want a record of all the, the incoming money, so the but the benefits received, expenses for food and housing, so all of that goes under one category, expenses for clothing, educational, dental, medical, personal expenses, all in another category, and personal and spending cash. So those are the three you you can. Um, so I byline like I actually say what it was, but you don't technically have to. You just have to say this is how much money came in this month. This month, this is how much I spent on food and housing. This is how much I spent on clothing, educational, dental, medical, personal altogether. This is how much I gave in personal spending cash. Um, and that is information you need to provide if you get a letter from Social Security saying it's tax time. We want you to file this document for this person. When I signed up, I asked Brenda, um, so is that something like I have to do every year? And she said, oh, no, it's actually, I think it's, she said it's, um, I'm not sure if she said it's randomly generated or how it is, but she's basically like, it's um, only one out of every 10 people actually is asked to fill out this form. So most years you won't fill out the form, um, uh, but you, you have to be ready to fill out the form if they're like, hey, we're checking in on you, making sure you're spending this money right. Indeed, year number one, I got the letter and I had to do the file the tax form um for for her uh but it, it really wasn't hard like i just um took everything i had here copied it into the form with her name and social security now it was it was a it was as far as tax paperwork goes it was relatively painless um uh okay so then but again oh that's also like likewise like hypothetically and this, i mean i shouldn't say it, like legally um I also like need to keep receipts to show that I um, 
I'm spending the money the way I'm saying that I'm spending the money. Now I use, I have almost all, I do all of this shopping like online. So I don't actually go to the store. I buy stuff. Uh, uh, I'll talk about like e-shopping, like shipped and stuff like that, but I do Amazon and shipped and um, her, her rent is direct deposited and stuff like that. So I have, all, I have sometimes if I make a big purchase, I will print out a copy of the e-receipt. But like it's all pretty much online. Um, but that said, if the government ever, I'm pretty sure the government could totally be like, you need to provide us the paper receipts that you should have been printing for all of this. And since you didn't, you now owe us all of this money or whatever. Um, I'm just kind of like, look, I'm writing it all down. It's all online. I've got some of the big stuff printed out. I'm just kind of uh, hoping that doesn't happen. But you're supposed to keep receipts. That's, that's part of the... So I keep a receipt every time I get a paper receipt and periodically I'll go through and print out online uh, receipts as well. Um, so that's like the reporting and accountability stuff. Um, so then uh, how do I make this work? The way I, uh, the way I feel like the steps of, if you want to do this, um, this is uh, bringing back the, the memory, but you, um, fill out some paperwork. They'll send you a big packet of paperwork. You go with the person who's interested. You have to like sit down together. You have to open a bank account um, for that person. So I think did Ian go with? I can't remember. But you have to you have to open up a bank account where she says like I agree that this person this person has the sole access to the bank account, but it's my name is on it as the representative payee. So there's steps, and they'll like that's all in this um, in that folder. A guide for representative payee booklet. It tells you like how to get started, yada, yada, yada. Um, but eventually you will have a bank account and you will have checks and you will have a debit card associated with that banking account. Every month, the money from the government will get direct deposited into the banking account and you need to spend it. And you do need to spend it. Um, um, it uh, and this is also like you, if, if there's more than $2,000 in the account, including savings accounts at all, at any time you could get in trouble. You're supposed to spend it down to less than, so the person has less than $2,000 at all time. So you actually have to, even to the point where if you can get about $800, I have to spend it down to 1200. So when the 800 drops, it doesn't push me over 2000. Hmm. So you do have to kind of spend it when it comes in. Um, so I've got it arranged at Crawford uh, rent is direct deposit. Uh, like it's also direct. So every month her benefits come in a few days after some of it goes out in rent to Crawford. <coughs> and then I uh, buy, so that's basically, that's housing. That's like the big housing chunk of it. So then I have to buy her food and then other kind of clothing, medical, dental, personal expenses. The food I use a um, uh, online shopping um, app for Eden, um, like a grocery, a grocery delivery service. The one I use is called Shipt, S-H-I-P-T, um, uh, which is actually pretty, pretty, you know, pretty charming. It's pretty useful. Uh, it's, you know, it's like designed for like, you know, all the ads when you hop up, they're like, you're a mom and you're too busy to shop, that sort of thing. Um, uh, but what it is, is you, it's connected to several stores in Bloomington. Kroger, Kroger's the one I use, but you can also connect it to Target or some other places. You go on, you shop online, you make a list, you then um, give instructions. I want this delivered at this address at this time. Um, and uh, you hit send and you give them the biggest tip possible. And um, that's how I make the grocery orders. Um my initial, the way I initially imagined it was that I would have like a standing grocery list that I would just regularly just hit reorder and then maybe sub things in or out. But that's never actually worked because Eden's always had very particular ideas about what she wants at any particular time. So I always just wait for the caseworker will be like, here's the grocery, here's the grocery list for this week. I go on, ba 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 fill up the shopping cart, pick out a time that I know the caseworker is going to be there as the delivery time, click, go, boom. My work as the sh food shopping is done. I don't know how you would do this representative pre 
internet sh shopping, this would be a, a real much bigger job. So, so this kind of this tech stuff does does help. Um, then, likewise, I do uh, I do an Amazon or like uh, other kind of like other shopping order that's less frequent. Um, but every two or three months, it's like okay, we got a clothing order. So then, um, I've also done the I've done this. It hasn't worked as well, but on Amazon, if you want to use Amazon, you um, can create something called a wish list. So the wish list, I'm in control of the account, but she can make a wish list on it. So she goes on to Amazon with the caseworker, types in, this is all the stuff I want. I can just pull that up and order it uh, for her and have it shipped to her. Um, so that is like looking at my, let's see, I'm gonna look at my last, so this is the last three three months. I'm gonna I'll sell my last three months of expenses of transactions. I had rent shipped, Amazon, 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 bus passes, cash shipped, shipped, rent, dog stuff shipped, shipped, rent shipped, shipped. So like most of the transactions are going online and doing stuff online. Um, there are then time, there are sometimes when, oh, and then there's also spending cash. So uh, uh, Eden does get spending cash and your, your payee would want that. Um, so you'll just have to negotiate and work out how much. Um, when we first started, I was giving, uh, just because um, the reason Eden has a representative payee and the reason all the the folks you would take on would have representative pays is because they don't use their money well. Um, I sort of said to Brenda Brittle, the the um, the person in Social Security, I was like, so she, you know, she'll probably she's probably gonna use it on like drugs. How much should I give her? And she was like, give her. She was like, I'd only give her like twenty bucks a week. You, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be accountable for. That's about as much as I would feel. You could say like I had to give them something. Um, I now give Eden $40 a week, um, which is more than $20 a week. Uh, um, not because I'm convinced she's using it super well, but indeed it was like an issue of like, kind of like there would be big, there would be large piles of money and I couldn't figure out what to spend it on. Um, and it also gives flexibility. So the caseworker is able to use that money. There's a, there's a, there, that means there's a larger store of cash at a time. Um, which like, so just recently, um, her caseworker took her to, uh, where did they go? I, I think Target, or they went to Walmart to buy stuff. Um, I gave them a check, but the check didn't clear. Don't ask me why I was like, but didn't clear. Um, so then they used cash from her personal, like the store of personal cash. And so like I balanced the books that way. So anyways, I do give Eden $40 a week, which is probably more than I ought to give um, spending cash. It's still like, she thinks it's not enough. You know, it's not, it doesn't, it's not enough to make her happy. Um, uh, but uh, that's, that's the number that I've settled on. So in order to do that, I do periodically, I go to the credit union, I'll take out. And it's also tricky because you can't save, you can't accrue savings. So I'm only able to take out as much as I'm able to take out because there's never that much in the account. Um, but I'll go and I'll take out the maximum amount I can, which is like 500 bucks um, in cash. I will take that to the caseworker. I'll say hello to Eden, check in with her. And then that 500 bucks will last 12 weeks. And 12 weeks, I need to go back, get more cash and, and deliver more spending cash. Um, for the spending cash, uh, and this is also good, uh, another sheet, uh, spending cash registry. So the caseworker also super useful that there's a caseworker. The caseworker, I make them do that. I'm not giving in her spending cash. The caseworker has a big pile of it and doles it out weekly, which again, that means, um, and they are supposed to both write their names and initial when money goes out. So you're able to keep track of it. And again, I've had caseworkers. Uh, I had one caseworker um, who really caved to pressure. So even would be like, give me more money, give me more money. And they did, they gave them more than 40 a week. Um, so I had to like, then I had to be the hard heavy of like, well, then it's gonna be no spending cash for a while, blah, 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 blah. But most caseworkers have been really good about, I say, this is how much you can have every week. That's how much they dole out every week. So it lasts as long as I'm expecting it to last. Um, 
And then every once in a while, uh, you will need to do in-person purchases. One thing uh, is bus passes. So I meet, so she uses a bus. So we're able to get her reduced fee bus passes, which I buy in bulk. But it's like the most I can buy at a time is 100 I can spend a hundred dollars to to buy our bulk bus passes. So, and though that lasts her like two months. So every two months, I meet Danielle at the transit station, and I make I buy a hundred bus tickets and send them back to Crawford with Danielle. Um, when she bought, she did, she got a mobility scooter. So I had, I went with her to like go get a mobility scooter because I needed to be there for like the purchasing uh, of that large of an item. Um, so there are like times that you'll just like have to shop. Um, uh, if you like that sort of thing, it could be really fun. Um, uh, so yeah, so that's like, a, that, that's like the logistics. So like, that's what it actually entails and, and, and how it, how it kind of works on my end. Yeah. Oh, it's super educational. Does anyone yeah. have any questions? <laughs> So Ross, it sounds like um, you're able to do most of this stuff from a computer or from a phone. Yeah. Um, what if you leave town for a couple of weeks? I mean, I'm assuming you can do most of this stuff wherever you are. It's just that occasional time when you have to physically do something and you would just say, I can't do it that week. Yeah, indeed. Um, uh, exactly. Yeah, I was I was away most of the summer um, and, and kind of said like, I may be totally unavailable this entire time. But because it is almost all on the phone, I found spots where I was at Wi-Fi. I was like, okay, I guess I can place this order right here real fast. Um, uh, and yeah, and that's also, again, that's also why the, having the caseworker is really useful and the store of cash. So it's kind of like, and I also, I, um, it didn't work at Walmart this week, but uh, she has a checking account. So she has, she has a checkbook. And then um, I have a blank signed check. Um, that I leave with the caseworker, which I do just say like, this is like, if you need it for emergencies, you can spend it. This is how much is in the account. Um, uh, like I said, it didn't clear at the at Walmart, but but that exists. So you can, it's nice because there's a caseworker, you can be like, I'm taking some time off. You're on your own or you know, you take, you deal with it. You take care of it. Um, yeah. So Russ, I, this is Gail. I think you mentioned that you had maybe five or six meetings in a year with your person mm -hmm. and and what would they be for what would you be doing at that time well it's usually so the first couple ones um usually now i mean it's honestly it's when i go in to like deliver money or whatever she's often just around so like she hangs out by the, the front so the there are a couple of there have been times I've gone in to drop something and she's not there and I don't see her. Then there's times she goes in. I'm like, oh, it's Eden. Hello, how are you doing? You know, um, and we'll we'll chat. Um, I once went in and this was kind of like early because she was like upset with me and like the stuff she wasn't getting money wise. And so I kind of offered like, let's come in, let's all sit down and talk. And so we all sat down and talk and I kind of, I had to be like, this is what it's for. This is, the, this is how much money I can spend. This is what I can't spend. If you want these things, we can get you those things. This is how we can get you those things. Um, uh, you know, like one of her, um, her sort of hangups was like, I want to be able to buy, you should just give me cash because I want to be able to buy gifts for my grandkids. I was like, well, I can't give you more cash, but I'd be happy to buy gifts for your grandkids. Totally approved the expense. You just need to work with your case manager to get a, a list together. You give me that list, I'll get it and you can give it to your grandkids. Um, and then that's never happened. She's never given me a list for her grandkids, but like that helps calm her down. And, and yeah. um, so uh, uh, again, usually the, I, um, you wouldn't have to see the person hardly at all if you didn't want to, but I often just happen to run into her when I go down to Crawford. Yeah, but you said you probably would be setting up a joint account to begin with, with that. Mm -hmm. So you go to the bank together, maybe? Yes, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Whether she, I kind of feel like she didn't go with me to the bank. I think, um, I think there was paperwork. I think it was a paperwork thing. I think I got her to sign something. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe, I think maybe it's like we had to meet up to do the paperwork saying, we definitely had to meet up and be in the same room when she said, I'm giving, I am naming this person my representative payee. And there had to be witnesses and like that was like a legal thing. Right. Um, and then I think from that, I got a letter from Social Security. 
which allowed me to open the bank account. Um, but you do have to get together a couple, and it's a good, just a good idea. The, um, those first couple times like, we were able to be like, that's when we figure out like how much cash she was getting and what's the process going to be and how do we, you know, um, what kind of things do you need? So right. those are, I'm sure it'll be, I'm sure you'll all want to meet the person and, you know, yeah, um, have those kind of conversations. Yeah. yeah. I think my one question is like, could you say like they wanted a big expense item and could you kind of weasel around month to month and save that way so they could get something bigger? You, um, uh, uh, no. No, uh, okay. And, um, if, if you're able to finance it, if you're able to finance it on installments, that I bet you could totally do that. Um, but they really don't want you to have more than 2000 in the That's really the good. That's the, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was also, yeah, I, I thought that too. It's because I was like, we could totally, I could totally just spend, you know, I could save 150 a month and it's, you know, and then she could get a trailer, or get a, you know, but they really don't want you, you're not supposed to do that. Okay. Okay. Ross, uh -huh. how, are, how are medical things handled? If they have to go to the hospital or they have an emergency of some kind, is there financial things that you have to deal with in that? Good. Yeah. Um, uh, no, my experience has been no. Uh, of course, I also know that medical bureaucracy, uh, I, I can't, I would love to promise all of you that the answer would always be no. Um, I'm pretty sure that everyone at Crawford is on um, Medicaid. Yeah. Um, so um, they all have like insurance. And so Eden has um, huge, has lots of health problems. She's always in and out of the hospital. And I've never um, been... I've never had to deal with any finance stuff around that. I've had to like she does. Um, she has sleep apnea, and so she has a nebulizer, which like I have to pay for. That's like that is something that like I get a bill every month for. That I usually only I'll let, let it accumulate for like three months, and then I'll pay it off because I'm a little lazy on the on the nebulizer bill. Um, but like so, there are some. She has like things that she needs that I. Uh, tend to, but not like I'm not dealing with her medical insurance or seeing the doctor or hospital bills or anything like that. Okay, good. And those things um, are things that you might write a check for and put them in the mail? Is that? Yeah, actually, actually the nebulizer is the only I have to write a check and put it in the mail thing. I, I found a way to use the credit card or um, do online. Okay. Um, Put that nebulizer, paper check envelope, which I like. I prefer. I don't. I don't. You know, I'm not, at home we do all paper bills and checks, but that's the only one for Eden that I do. Okay. So you said, I think you said, in terms of your time, of the time commitment in a week, once you have things set up, because at the beginning it's going to take some time to get things set up. Mm. But after that, it might be half hour, 45 minutes a week, an hour a week. Um, mm -hmm. And that's kind of all you have to deal with. Yeah. And I would say that the, the, the mode is less than that. So like it'll be that comes from I probably only spend on a typical week. I will place one and a half shipped orders, which will take me 15 minutes. Then like. Once a month, I have to take a trip to the bus station to meet Danielle. And that takes like 45 minutes. And then, uh, you know, once a month, I have to do a big Amazon order. And that will take like an hour by itself. And then once, uh, you know, I'm, every 12 weeks, I have to like go to the bank and withdraw a big bunch of cash and then go to Crawford and drop it off and then chat with Eden. And that takes like two hours. So it's like um, uh, there are like bigger things that take a chunk of time. But um, a typical week is just like 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we Any know, other? Do we know how many people are in need of this service and what the heck are they doing in the meantime? Just curious. That is a great question. That's a good, that'd be a question for Danielle. Um, I, I mean, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are, I, I have no idea. I mean, there is, there are people who should have a payee who don't, um, mm -hmm. And then there are people who I think are legally like will lose their benefits if they don't have a payee. Um, I do, those are different categories. So um, I'm not, I assume that obviously the latter would be the highest priority, but they may have 
the former too. They may be like, this is a person who is getting money, but just isn't using it well. And we think they'd flourish if they had a better accountability of their finances. So I'm not sure who would, who they have in mind exactly. I think we could, we could find that out from Danielle and uh, yeah. let you know that Marie. Yeah. Oh, great. And so Danielle, she never hopped on, right? It's just us. Yeah. Okay, no problem. <laughs> you okay, did well, an amazing I'm... job all by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you really <laughs> educated us all. Thank you. It's good. Yeah. Are there are there any 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 last questions? Awesome. Thank well, God so bless. God bless you all for time. Thank you for all your. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. All. It's it's an it is kind of thankless, but an important, uh, really cool thing to be able to do. So I'm, uh, and it's the sort of thing I think very few people would be willing to think of, even consider. So the fact that you're just giving this consideration is is really beautiful. So, and I think you all have my email. So um, I'm, I'm still learning and not an expert at all, but happy to answer other questions or whatever as this goes along. Okay. Yeah, I thank you. I think that I have everyone's email on this call, except for you, Marie. Do you mind if I take yours down so that if I get the answers from Danielle, then I can pass these on along to you? Uh, you're muted right now. You're muted. Want me to put it in the chat? Yeah, put it, put it in the chat, even better. And then uh, I'll send a follow-up email um, so that everybody has contact information and try to get some of these. I think a lot of us were taking notes, um, but I kind of summarized some things here as well. So great. Yeah. This was phenomenal. Thank you again, yeah. Ross. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Ahead. There we go. Yes, perfect. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye, everyone. Bye. Good night. Bye -bye.